bloody fantastic. Hello everybody, my name is Good Boy, and welcome to a special coaching vi video extravaganza with my great esteemed guest, Hunterler. Hi Hunterler. Hey man, how's it going? Yeah, yeah. Well, my son cut my face open, but other than that, it's absolutely fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so Hunterler, uh, you're a coach for Gamer Sensei, isn't that right? Yes. Yeah, and so the awesome thing about Gamer Sensei is naturally, of course, everybody who's watching this, they sponsor my channel. But the other cool thing about it is that actually um, we see a massive improvement in students with literally just a few sessions. Um, and the cool thing that, that's happening right now is that you can get your first session with Huntler right now for $5. And he will take your Clinks gameplay, analyze it intensively, and make you an awesome Clinks, getting yourself plenty of MMR. Isn't that right, Huntler? Yeah, that's, that's true. Like, um, I coached someone recently uh, on Clinks, and he climbed from, I think it was 1.3k to 2.9k in one wow. month and the next month, month to 3.5k honestly joking. i didn't really want to say that because i think people are gonna be like no that's bullshit but it's it's true like 100 percent. I, I cannot take all the credit like the guys really worked worked hard for it, for it. yeah absolutely yeah, absolutely for sure like he uh, really tried to get better at it uh, wow that that's insane that's absolutely insane so <laughs> It's like over a thousand M1 a month. That's that's ridiculous. So uh, yes. So that yeah. that that's well, that's uh, that's that's what more off. than double the MMR. More than double the MMR. That's the insane. MMR, yeah. That's insane. And and like I say, everybody, if you are you know, like I say, you've got the knowledge there. You've been you know, you've been watching my guides. You know the basics. You understand what needs to go on, but you want to take it to the next level. And you, it's time to leave a skill bracket. Huntler for five dollars, bearing in mind how long you will spend on the game for your first session, is going to take you from completely, completely to a different skill bracket. Um, but yeah, no, it's fine. He's, he's two. He had a tantrum and he has claws for nails, so that's that's what happened. But other than that, yeah, no, I'm I'm great, thank you. Um, what we're going to be looking at today is the rather fantastic Clinks, who actually has one of the highest win rates in the five k plus bracket. But of course, in the lower skill brackets, unfortunately, Clinks is struggling. It actually has a negative win rate. But of course, if you really, really, really want to abuse the meta and get some sweet MMR, Huntler is going to show us how to get super pro, super fast with playing Clinks. For sure. Okay. All right, Huntler. Let's talk about the mid-game plan and what to do in the mid-game as team fights are happening a lot more and how to optimize the use of Clinks. So... Like I've said previously, I'm just checking the map a lot. For example, right here, I'm approaching a fight. I'm checking them. I don't want to. I don't want to get surprised by anything. Like right now, it's only 12 minutes in. Yeah. So oh. it's not like they can surprise me with anything. But later on, they might have some uh, some items. So you definitely need to uh, take care of that. Also, try to always ult before going in. As you can see right here, I'm, I didn't ult. But that's because I really know the limits of the hero, but in the beginning I would definitely recommend you to just ult every time when you're about to go in. Try to keep the pressure up, try to go behind their towers. Behind their towers is actually the safest route for you to take because usually they don't have sentries right there. They just don't. They don't place sentries behind their towers, so you can just scout for them easily. And you need to try to predict their movements. For example, right here, as you, as you could see, I killed, I, I took down the tower and then I I immediately check for that Lina. Right here, I actually teleported there because I thought that Lina might see the, uh, the sinking and she might go for him. So that's how I'm trying to uh, to predict their movements. Great, also, when it, comes, uh, when it comes to itemization, in this case, I went for a medallion. Usually the build is pretty, pretty standard. Like if I don't go for magic wand, I get Aquila. If I go for the magic wand, I don't go Aquila because that's just too many cheap items. Um, I'm only building medallion if I think I can put a medallion to very good use. For example, if I'm against a Nyx, I'm not going to go for the medallion because I don't think I can um, hit him constantly for the entire period of the medallion. Or if I'm against an Ursa, once again, I'm not going to go for the medallion because I feel like I'm just going to put the medallion on and then he ults. So I don't really care about that extra bit of damage. Yeah. Okay, fine. Or, or against the Necrophos, the same story, like... If they can, if they can, if they have some sort of way to dodge my burst, 
I'm not gonna go medallion. Yeah. If there is a Slark that can ult, if there is a Queen of Pain, yeah, it's just not gonna be that efficient. Right here, as you could see, yeah. I'm also trying to imagine who can really catch me. You know, that's extremely important because when people think about kiting, they think about just not getting close to people, and that's completely wrong. Like, you need to kite the threat, not everyone. Like, I'm not gonna kite this guy if he cannot kill me. If he cannot kill me, I'm gonna sit close to him. Yeah, it, it, he can be an Ursa, he can be any anyone. Yeah. What's important is uh, for you to understand if he can kill you or not. For example, in this case, they need three people to kill me. They need the Sanky, uh, the the Chaos Knight, sorry, Chaos Knight, the yeah, Bat yeah. Rider, plus someone, you know, like plus the Lina or something. Like if I only see the Bat Rider and the Leech, I'm not gonna back off. You know, I'm gonna go in but I'm thinking about ways to to go on them. Right here, as you could see, I immediately checked both of them. Yeah. You know, like I'm going in, I'm check, checking check for items, yeah. Yes, yes. Cause I need I need to be aware. Do they have a dust? Do they have a sentry? Right here, let's see. I'm going in, checking the bat writer. He has a dust. He's not gonna pop it just like that. So that's fine. I'm just gonna keep on going. That guy has a dust as well. So I'm not immediately backing off. I know that even if they're gonna pop it just like that, what's the follow up? Like Bat Rider ults me that guy's gonna use the Nova, but I have 1.7k HP plus a magic wand. Like, I'm not gonna go down. They are just gonna waste their cooldowns. Yeah. So right there, if I would've went on the Bat Rider, yeah. I couldn't kill him. Bat Rider was tanky enough, but I could kill the Leech, because Leech has no stuns. Yeah. So it's very important to try to imagine how the fight is gonna look like, yeah. and try to imagine who can kill you. Yeah. So you can, uh, so you can play aggressive. You yeah. know, like right here, I'm going behind the tower. Like I've said, they never catch you right here. Yeah. So yeah, that's how you play to the to the limits because you really need to dive in with the clings. Like you cannot play it safe. Right here, I decided to go on him because I was like, okay, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna lasso me? If you lasso me, I'm still close to you. You know. Yeah. So he cannot really get away right there because Bartram is giving me vision, and I'm just trying to sit a lot in their jungle. But in order for you guys to do that, once again. You need to really check them for sentries, for dust. You need to ask yourself, who can kill me? How can they kill me? If you just go like that, you're going to die a lot. Yeah. And it's not worth it. Yeah, yeah. So you really, so, really got to consider. Yeah, the key is map awareness. Like, yeah. you need great map awareness if you want to play this hero well, which is not is not an easy task, but no. it can definitely give you a lot of MMR. Actually, the Klings was the, the, Klings was the hero that I um, had the highest win streak with. with. I really? had seven, what, what was your win yeah, streak? 17 wins in a row. 17 <laughs> wins in a row. So yeah. it's, it's just first picking, first uh, picking clinks. First, first picking clinks as well. First My picking. goodness, I'd be terrified of being countered, but that's brilliant. Yeah. So um, now, presumably, um, so, yeah, so that's that's nearly, hold on. So 17 wins in a row, that's nearly 500 MMR. <laughs> just like that. Um, yep. So, so that's that's so you know similar to Necrophos earlier on in the patch, sort of easy MMR then basically at, at your level. Yeah, Clings is also fun. Like you don't depend on anyone. You can you can um, split push if you want. You can farm if you want. That's also important. Like if you see that they have a Chaos Knight that's tanky. Let's say that you didn't have the greatest game. You know, yeah. They have a Chaos Knight that's tanky. They have a Lina that has a Shadow Blade, Yule Scepter. Yeah. They have a Bat Rider that has a Ghost Scepter. Don't overcommit, you know, like ask yourself, can I kill them? If you cannot kill them, yeah. farm, yeah. split push. Don't don't go there and start attacking them and then they escape with like 10% HP and you die. Because that doesn't that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. You know, you're just gonna you're just gonna feed them. So just farm up, try to take the Roshan like I'm doing right now. You can easily take the Roshan if you get some help or if you get a double damage rune. Yeah. Yeah. Don't ever ult small creeps. Always go for the big ones. Um, yeah. yeah. The yeah. only small creeps that I would ult would be the ogres. Not not the blue one. The blue one doesn't have that much uh, yeah. HP. The the regular ogres. Yeah. So okay, fine. So a lot. I'm noticing as well. A lot of your your extremely well. So so by compared to compared to say for example one or two K standards, you're very very cautious in your in your approach um in terms of whether or not to decide to kill is the yes, ages I'm... here a, a factor is that factoring yes. into your how aggressive you're being yes I'm, I'm just taking a bit more risk like right there i thought that lena is gonna ult the ogre 
Okay. But actually, she she played it really well. Like she just went for me with that ulti. I was not expecting it. I thought that she's just gonna commit on the ogre. But that's okay. Like when I get the ages, I want to trade that ages for a couple of kills that yeah. can lead into the racks because with the clings you can really take the the racks down yeah. easily. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a little bit um, it's it's scary. I've seen um, Dendi wipe out the entire. I mean, all three towers. And all racks in thirty seconds <laughs> with clinks. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you know, yeah, absolutely, very, very difficult to um, to play against late game because if you let your guard down or leave your base f for a little bit, suddenly clinks destroys it while you're not there. Yep. So, um, okay, great. So let's talk. So let's see your guy revolutions. Obviously, you've got a desolator. That makes complete sense naturally. And then you've got a medallion of. Uh, sorry, sorry. You've got. Uh, what are your other items? I went for a Solar Crest, because I already got a Medallion. Usually when I go Medallion, I get the completed Solar Crest. Yeah. Um, the next item is going to be a Lincoln. Now, you need to think about this, like, do, do you need more damage? Do you need more Lockdown, or do you need more defense, uh, defensive capabilities? Yeah. So, for defensive capabilities, I would go for BKB yeah. or Lincoln. So, right here, as you can, as you can tell, BKB would be great. But I, I don't think Chose Knight is going to catch me. I don't think Lina is going to catch me. I think only the best rider is going to catch me with that lasso. So that's how that's why I go Lincoln. So just because they have out of stance doesn't necessarily mean that you need to go BKB. You need to really think about who can actually catch you. Yeah. So I want Lincoln. If you need more damage, which is rare, very rare, you can go for um, Diffusal Blade. Yeah. No, actually, no. That's for control. If you want just damage, you can go for uh, Bloodthorn. Yeah. You can go for... Daedalus, you can go for MKB if they have missed chance. Yeah. If uh, if you if you need more control, you you can go for the hex. I actually go hex quite a lot. Okay. It just allows you to just one shot people. Um. So yeah, hex diffusal blade against ghost scepters no, or I've, against. I've noticed uh, that even Omni. Not, um, uh, well, it's a bloodthorn. How often do you go for bloodthorn? Because orchid was was quite a standard sort of core item on 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 clinks on clinks but you're from the south thing you're saying is actually it's more of a situational item uh it's definitely a situational item so sometimes i go first item or hit i go for it when i'm against a storm yeah when i'm against uh, an ember because those are heroes that you can actually kill with that silence yeah but against something like an invoker i think invoker is just a bit tankier than them a bit faster i think he can just run away just like that yeah um, so I don't really like that. Yeah. Also, Orchid. Orchid is not really a great item later on because every item in this game is countering it. Like, yeah. almost literally, you know, like if you think about it, a Ghost Scepter is countering it because you Orchid then the Ghost Scepter. A Shadow Blade counters it. A Newell Scepter counters it. A Force Staff. Um, a Manta. Lincoln. Um, even something, even something like a Sanjin Yasha, just the fact that they are a bit tankier and a bit faster, yeah, means that you just cannot kill them. You know, yeah. like you silence them and all that, but they are just tanky enough to survive it. Yeah. So I don't really like it. Hex, on the other hand, it's also gonna slow them down. Yeah. And it's it's gonna stop them. You know, like they cannot use the the Shadow Blade, they cannot use the Ewol, yeah. any of that stuff. Brilliant. Okay. Cool. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. No, that's 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 really great. So, uh, Hunter, take me through decision making for deciding who to go for in a team fight. Yeah, so usually, like the the most important thing is once again for you to not die in the process. That's the first thing. Second thing is for you to be able to kill the target. Like checking them is important right here. So you can see I'm checking all of them to try to analyze. Like, if I go on the tools card, can I kill him? I can. Can they kill me? They can't. They have the dust and all that, it's not going to be enough. If Tuscar wants to use the Snowball, he needs to use it on me and I got my Lincoln. And as you can see, I'm sitting in such a way that Batrider cannot uh, reach me in time. Like, he might reach me, let's say that Tuscar is going to bring my Lincoln, yeah. and then Batrider reach, uh, reaches me, but I already killed the Tuscar. So they don't have enough damage, and then I just kill all of them. Right, so you really need to try to visualize how they're going to throw the spells, how are they going to defend from you. Yeah. And then you just right go straight here, up after, just, after killing them, you just straight up burn them yeah. down. <laughs> yeah, you got you got um, two straffs in one uh, dark pact. Yeah, so you got plenty of time to stay beefy. Yeah. So talk to me about um, 
bad decision making and where things went wrong in your game? Uh, right, so right here, I went in, I got a kill on the leash, that's perfectly fine. I'm Right now I'm backing away, I'm using my invis. And right here I decided to go back in, which is bad because they are all eventually going to approach me. So like I've said previously, they need three people to catch me and they got the three people right here. So I should have taken it more, I should have played it more safe, uh, just use the invis and get out because I didn't have it. I couldn't use it again, you know, it, it was on cooldown, so right there. I uh, I just um, disregarded how much damage they can do to me. Yeah. So you are not invincible with this hero. That's what that's what I'm trying to say. Like, don't don't be like, okay, I see Huntless playing. He's really aggressive. I'm aggressive because I know what they can do. But if you are gonna, if you're not gonna track how much damage they can uh, they can uh, put out, how much control they have, you can get. You can get caught easily because you are usually just diving. So yeah, yeah, exactly. So so proximity of teammates being a massive one here is you sort of neglected, as it were, that actually there's loads of people nearby that are going to come on you and 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 yes. kick you in. Yeah. So talk to me about split pushing. Right. So usually when I split push, I want to start it out by picking someone off if possible. Like the reason why I'm split pushing is because I cannot gank them anymore. You know, like, split pushing is never the solution. You know, like, um, sorry, it is a solution. It's just not the, it's not my main plan. The main plan would be to just kill them and take down the racks. But if I fail to do that, I play defensively. I just farm. I wait for them to overextend because eventually they will overextend. And if they are not going to do that, I'm just going to, I'm just going to start split pushing. A uh, very important tip, if creeps, if your creeps are going to reach that symbol, the backdoor protection is going to be uh, is going to be shut down for 15 seconds right. and this applies to all the lanes so if creeps are going to reach to that point in the bottom lane you backdoor can take down, the, down and it, and it, yes. in any place so yeah you so you knew, can take you down the full while with the with the timber saw pushing bottom that backdoor yes. protection was off and therefore you could take out top without any problem yes okay. right here it was an obvious one but really, like, the creeps don't need to reach the tower. That's important. Like, the creeps only need to reach that symbol on the ground. Okay. So usually, um, just uh, a couple of minutes ago, the Senkin split pushed bottom. Yeah. The creeps reached that symbol. Yeah. So I went up and I forced, a, a, I forced a glyph just like that. They were definitely not expecting it. Yeah. So that's, 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 that's huge. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. Okay, so that was pretty successful, but this, you got this uh, Tusk chasing you, and presumably he's Wrath there. Yeah. So right here I'm going Nivis and I'm thinking, okay, they don't see me now, so who are they going to go for? They're going to go for that guy that's going uh, for the bottom racks, so they're not going to pay attention to me. So I can take down this one. Right right here, that Timber so, um he didn't manage to take down the racks, so it was obvious that they're going to go for me. So right here, another mistake, I decided to to try to turn around and kill the bat rider, but I, I had the ages, but that was still a bad uh, a bad play because it was obvious when they see me taking the racks, they're gonna come for me, at least three people. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was bad. Right here as you can see I'm going for the for the ship stick. Because yeah. like I've said, you sit, you farm, you wait for their mistake and you split push. And ship stick is providing me with just that. Like if I see someone out of the base, yeah. I hex them and get a kill and that's it. Okay, brilliant. So we've got here. Oh, so you, you, now now you're returning back to, to just burn their base into the ground again. Yes, yes. All right, here I got a. I I didn't know if the back door was down, but I got a double damage. So it was worth it. Yeah, it was definitely worth it. And like they're gonna kill you right here. They kill you, yeah. So I didn't that's, that's, I didn't pop the cheers. And that's and basically clinks makes it makes it very easy to play objectives, isn't it? Um, yes. And you can sort of solo play objectives, as it were, particularly as the game progresses. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's brilliant. That's, I imagine that's part of his success. It's just, um, yeah. Okay, great. So how do we end the game? And perhaps more importantly, what are your final tips, particularly for those who are a bit lower skill, who are going to struggle more to play clicks? So if you want to, uh, if you want to end the game, uh, it's important for you to, to try to fight, uh, use the straff, for the fight, don't use the straff on the tower if you think they are just gonna glyph it and then they are gonna engage you, because cleans without the straff, 
is an useless clink. Clinks without the ultimate is an useless clink. So you really need to save them for the fight if you think they're gonna if you think they're gonna take a fight and don't be afraid of uh, taking a fight. You can definitely do that. You just need to make sure that you are gonna use the straf and you are gonna attack uninterrupted. So get a BKB if you have to. Get a ship stick if you have to. Whatever it takes, so you're not gonna get uh, you're not gonna get interrupted. Um, also about lower uh, MMR players, I think the main mistake that they are doing is the fact that they are not checking the map. Like I've been coaching people on how to play clings for a while now, mm. and I constantly see them. They are just uh, they are just going in. Uh, their activity is rough. They attack, but they don't know how much damage they are about to do, how much how much HP the enemy has, what kind of items they have, if they have a dust, if they have a sentry. So they don't really know what to expect. So they really uh, they really count on the fact that they are ahead. And if they are ahead, it works. But if they are not ahead, it's not gonna work and they are gonna lose it. So they don't really know how to choose the right fights since they lack map awareness. Yeah. Okay, so map, map awareness being actually the number map one awareness. thing. Yes. Okay, fine. Okay, cool. And then, yeah. I suppose overextending is another one I see that's very common, particularly in 2K, is people will get overly aggressive. Um, yes. They don't know how to how to be like, okay, I cannot, I cannot kill them anymore. They, they got tanky. Yeah. Let's just farm. They don't know, or they don't know when to draw that line. Yeah. You know, like, okay, I just cannot do it anymore. Let's just farm. Yeah. And that's extremely important. This cost me um, a lot when I, st uh, when I first started to learn the clings, like I was just constantly going in, going in, going in. I need, I need to chill and just realize like, okay, if I keep the pressure up, it's not like they can leave the base anyway, because if they leave the base, I kill them. Yeah. So I'm just out farming them. Clings actually farms very fast. You just need to go for the ancients. Yeah. 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 You know, not, not for regular creeps, just for the ancients, because you kill them fast. If you go for regular creeps, you are only going to get like 100 gold, and it still takes you a lot of time to move from a camp to another camp. Yeah. So that's inefficient. You just want to sit somewhere and just kill ancient creeps and big creeps constantly. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes complete sense. And then that gives you a very, very good game of 19 to 2. So that's not, not too bad at all. <laughs> not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, so, uh, I also yeah. play, I've also played with a friend of mine right here, the Ogre. He yeah. just... It was the second time he ever played a game with real people, so it was a mess. Okay. So Klinks is definitely the hero that can just carry a game if you know how to play him properly. Yeah, yeah, okay, great.